A very good evening and welcome to this Sunday's edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our news studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudan Naika and as always, let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Three Sri Lankans died during Dhammadiva pilgrimage. An international company initiated legal action against Sri Lankan Airlines for failure to honor contracts. New Bar Association President promises reform. Sri Lanka Navy generates 3 billion rupees in revenue through its onboard security services. Chairman of the Elections Commission says the public are frustrated with parliamentary democracy. Speaking at an event held in Colombo yesterday, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe reiterated the need for new reforms to be brought into the country's legal sector. The Prime Minister was speaking at the 43rd Annual Convocation of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, where attorney at law U.R. De Silva was inducted as the 24th President of the BASL. The convocation was attended by a gathering including Acting Chief Justice Eva Vanasundara, Attorney General Jayanta Jayasuriya, Solicitor General Suhada Gamlat and President of the Court of Appeal Vijit K. Malagoda. Starting from this year, you will find a large number of new laws coming in. Some will be coming to Parliament. I think the, among the ones that we are contemplating will come will be a new counter-terrorist law to replace the anti uh, the Prevention of Terrorism uh, Act. There is a new law, the anti-dumping law, which creates a new uh, part of the legal market because as time comes on, there will be issues of trade which may not go to course, go elsewhere. The new Inland Revenue uh, Act which will be brought in uh, before Parliament by May or June. It's already been discussed with uh, some of the concerned parties. There are many more new laws that come in. The land bank, in regard to land, give ownership of flats. The biggest strength possessed by the judges is the independent bar. Irrespective of any political ideologies or of alike, the members of the bar had always shown their unity in the preservation of the independence of the judiciary and upholding the rule of law. I treat this as my foremost duty to see that much awaited changes both in procedure and substantive laws be brought into effect during my tenure. It is open secret that the recently concluded BSL election for presidency was perceived as a political inclined confrontation which I must assert with utmost responsibility, not true. I stand for the depoliticization of the noble legal profession, which must endeavor to achieve justice, none other than through justice alone. Chairman of the Elections Commission, Mahindra Deshapre, says public faith in parliamentary democracy has eroded Deshapri points out that 50% drop in new registrations for the 2016 electoral register as the best example. Mind Deshapri made this statement at an event held in Colombo yesterday to felicitate Sri Lankan bloggers. Speaker Karuchar Surya and Health Minister Dr. Rajat Sunaratna were also present for the event. Last week, the electoral list showed us how much the people have lost faith on the democracy of parliament. When we were drafting the annual electoral list since 2012, there was an increase of 300,000 registrations from 2012 to 2013 and an increase of 290,000 from 2013 to 2014. From 2014 to 2015, there was an increase of 390,000 new registrations. But when we calculate the list for 2016, there are just 190,000 new registrations. This is a 50% drop in new registrations or new voters, so to speak. What does this tell you? It means the potential voters of this country have lost trust in the system. The public mandate should be the basis of the power to rule. You can ensure a free and fair election during its due course only if you include your name in the electoral list. This is a period where a massive transformation in the media took place. We were able to bring forth the Right to Information Act in 2016, something which we have been trying to do for a period of 16 years. What we expected through this was to create a new mindset in the country. 
But there is a level of enthusiasm much more than what we expected. What we needed was to create a new world and a society which condemns corruption. Three Sri Lankans who embarked on the Dambadeva pilgrimage have died due to extreme cold temperatures. The Foreign Affairs Ministry said steps have been taken to repatriate the bodies. Visiting Buddhism's holiest site, the Mahabodhi Temple in Bodh Gaya, India, is a lifelong wish of all Buddhists and close to 100,000 Sri Lankan pilgrims undertake the journey every year. This unfortunate fate befell three pilgrims from Kurunagala and Mathura who recently left the country to undertake the pilgrimage. First they bathed, then they got fever. They were suffering from phlegm as well. They were given medicine. They got fever for the second time as well. Thereafter their condition worsened. They had the beast. We gave them medicine and we called a doctor. There were 41 of us and two died from our bus. The remains of one of the victims were brought to Sri Lanka on Friday, while the remains of the other two were repatriated earlier this morning. Judicial Medical Officer of Nigambo, Dr. Namal Fernando, conducted the post-mortem examinations, confirming that the cause of death was cardiac arrest. One of my aunts died while in Dambadiva. The organizers of the tour have demanded 350,000 rupees from my cousin brother to bring the remains of his mother to Sri Lanka. He had then deposited 200,000 to a bank account number from Kegol. They asked him whether they want the body or the ashes. It was the person who organized the tour. The money was deposited on the 23rd. Speaking to News First, the Minister of Justice and Buddha Sasana Vijayadasa Rajapaksa said that measures are on the way to implement a special program to ensure the safety of pilgrims. We have implemented several laws with regard to various companies that organize tours to Dambadiva. This is not something that happened recently. Such issues have cropped up over a long period of time. These laws have been implemented as a solution to these long-standing problems. We have cancelled the licenses of those who violate these laws. A full investigation will be conducted on this recent incident. If the need arises, we will even change the laws. These problems have arisen due to the negligence of certain individuals. We will not hesitate to take legal action against such persons. MP Vimal B. Ravansa, who has been staging a hunger strike for several days while in remand custody, was admitted to the prison hospital this morning. A group of supporters and colleagues in Parliament visited B. Ravansa today to inquire into his well-being. The visitors also spoke to the media after calling on MP Veerawansa. We looked into his condition and spoke to the doctors. The doctors said he cannot continue in this state and that his condition is critical. You must think about this. Lakshman Kiryal has told the media that he is consuming food and drink and that he is fine and well. But he is a fool. Vimal Veerawan says in the custody of the government and the prison is not ours, it's a government's. Do you think Kiryal will give Vimal Veerawansa food? Vimal Veerawansa is not fasting in order to receive bail. Receiving bail is harmful to his struggle. I wish to kindly inform all the people that he is not fighting for bail. It is his struggle which is foremost to him. News first made inquiries from prison's commissioner and spokesperson Tushara Upuldenia. MP Vimal Veerawansa, who is in prison and has commenced a hunger strike, was examined by the prison doctor this morning. It was decided to admit him to the prison hospital and it was done this morning. Doctors have reported that there is no problem at present. All they have said is that his blood pressure is low because he is not consuming food. Parliamentarian Vimal Veerawansa's imprisonment and hunger strike was brought up on the political stage today as well. Let's take a look at what his supporters and detractors had to say. He is in prison because of the crimes he has committed. No one in the government is exacting vengeance from him. There is evidence and the case against him is being proven, so his imprisonment cannot be prevented. In some African countries, even heads of state have been imprisoned for several years. We will tell the funeral parlor and take him to the cemetery. It is not a problem for us. We will do all of this without any shortcomings. Oh. 
Only two political parties had a tradition of doing such things to a political enemy. The UNP did not have this. If Minister John Amartunga has said this, then it appears that principle has changed. Usually parties like the SLFP, UNP, Lanka Samasamaja Party, Communist Party or Mahajana Eksat Peramuna would not say it is good if a political foe dies. There has not been such a tradition. Only the LTTE and JVP had such traditions. <laughs> The following views were expressed at a public rally held in Gaul today. Jude Jagrahan Karabu Mohinder Raja Baksha Mahatya. A Sri Lankan Das Pakse. Why did Mahinda Rajapaksa, who won the war, and the SLFP topple like he was struck by lightning? What happened to us? The trunk looks like it is in good condition from the exterior, but termites have destroyed it from within. The relatives are working like termites. The trunk that could not be moved even by elephants is being destroyed by termites. What happened in our country was the same thing. The rot from within commenced. That was our mistake. That is what happened to our leader. You have to strike a cloth against the rock and wash it properly for it to become clean again. So therefore, when we lost power, we should begin the cleaning process. It was only SWRD Bandara Naika who punished the rogues in the country. The SLFP and the UNP government did not do it. There are light bulbs on pandals. Some are red, some are blue and the others are green. They are beautiful to see. They light up separately. But if you go behind the pandal and check the wires, you will see that all the light bulbs are connected together. The thieves should be punished irrelevant of what party they are from. That is what I say. Steps should be taken on this. We are against the fact that the rogues of this government are being spared while the other thieves are being nabbed. They are trying to settle this. They are saying that both the groups are thieves, so let's settle this. What we are saying is that the thieves should be punished. <laughs> There should be a massive tree if a creeper is to grow. What has happened now? There are people who say that creepers could be there without the tree. What are they trying to do? They have begun the program to chop down the tree, thinking that the creeper will survive. But remember, if you chop down the tree, the creeper will fall. Not only that, the creeper will be squashed. They said yesterday that they are having a rally in Habaradua. Who came there? They scolded me in the very first speech. They reprimand us and go away. The people who destroy the UNP by crossing over and wanted to assassinate Mahindra Rajapaksa are shouting at us in foul language. But they do not scold the UNP. What is this contract? <laughs> Well, our viewers may recall that several years ago it was alleged that a powerful minister in the former regime, Johnston Fernando, had plotted with the LTTE to assassinate former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. Now, civil society activists say that plotting the assassination of a head of state is a crime that should receive strict punishment. At this time, we wish to place before you with responsibility evidence that has been devising various methods to induce certain MPs in the opposition to cross over. Three persons were arrested on suspicion of plotting the assassination of President Mahindra Rajapaksa on the 29th of July 2009 and were detained by the CID on the orders of the Defence Secretary. The three are Sivaraja Subhakrishnan, Tavaraja Singham Subhash and Linton Sandivation Vardarajan. The three of them were arrested because there was clear evidence that they were directly involved with the LTTE. We have phone numbers that were used in this plot. Between the 27th of February and 7th of April, MP Johnston had called these numbers on 45 occasions. We have this information. The government had recorded the conversation Johnston had with Subhash on the financial transaction. Johnston, monthly variable. Use this CD to induce Johnston to cross over. Many people have forgotten about how some leaders in the country at the time plotted to assassinate the leader of their country with the support of the LTTE. There are serious accusations against many MPs who are now in the joint opposition. We will certainly act on these accusations in the future. There are 50 files which have been studied at the Attorney General's Department. I believe that within the course of this year, the Attorney General's Department will file indictments based on the information in these 50 files against all these former MPs, politicians and former officials. 
pe janata ke apeksha hota hai the people of this country expect that every one of these individuals will be brought before the law and punished as the people we will continue to press the good governance government to act on this matter and to ensure that the minister who plotted this assassination with the ltte is punished janata ke hatiye tapi kar lo meva The attempted assassination of a VIP must be investigated with special attention, and those responsible must be punished. The LTTE terrorists carried out many assassinations, and the politicians involved in these are still here today. Why aren't these people being arrested and brought before the law? Johnson Fernando claims there is a political witch hunt underway. Even Johnson Fernando jumped from the UNP and into Mahindra Rajpaksa's lap in order to escape the law. There is an accusation that he brought a female LTTE suspect to Colombo and gave her security and shelter in a plot to assassinate the former president. We did not level this accusation. It was Mangala Samaravira who is now a powerful minister in this government who can push for this allegation to be investigated and enforce the law. So we believe that if Mangala Samaravira takes action on the accusations they leveled on countless platforms and enforce the law then it will be a good answer to allegations from people like Johnston regarding political witch hunts if they do this they can show the people that this is good governance and that the law is being enforced if they fail to do so then the people will be made to feel that both the Johnston Fernandos and the Mangala Samaraviras are the same On to another one of our headline making stories an international company through which Sri Lankan Airlines extended leases on 3A330 200 aircraft has filed action in London after the national carrier attempted to overturn the contracts saying they were not legally binding According to the Sunday Times the claimant SASOF2 Aviation Ireland Limited is seeking a declaration that Sri Lankan Airlines is contractually bound by the relevant extension agreements it is also seeking an order that all rental payments falling under the extended leases are paid in accordance with the contracts and costs The aircraft in question are three older A330 200s first leased by Sri Lankan in 2010 the original agreements were due to expire in January and February 2017 The paper goes on to say that the CEO of Sri Lankan Suren Ratwatte extended the leases last year despite a Sri Lankan board decision to do so only if three other planes were given on dry lease to Pakistan International Airlines. With the agreement with PIA falling short, Sri Lankan had written to SASOF2 giving notice that it will return the 3A330 200s at the end of the original leases ignoring the extension agreements. SASOF2 had replied saying that perpetrated notice is rejected and that the intended action is a breach of contract. The Sri Lanka Navy has earned 3 billion rupees from facilitating onboard security teams from the Gaul Operations Center since taking over duties from Avangard Maritime Security Services. The Sri Lanka Navy took over the duty of facilitating onboard security teams 16 months ago. Issuing a communique, the Sri Lanka Navy said The earnings had come across from over 8181 ship movements only through the Gaul Operations Center. A demonstration was held in the Sitandi area today demanding that the ongoing construction of an alcohol distillery in Kalkuda Batiklo be halted immediately. The demonstrators condemned the ongoing construction of the alcohol distillery, the attack on journalists who covered the construction recently and demanded that authorities take steps to reopen the Valachene paper factory. In the Madisali this distillery must be stopped there are too many distilleries in Batiklo already Who is the owner of this distillery it is Aloysius the son-in-law of Arjuna Mahindran a powerful figure who defrauded the nation's wealth they say this is owned by WM Mendes and company there is no need to build this distillery here but they are going ahead with it they have made it 100% tax exempt we cannot accept this Two powerful UN peers had attacked journalists with iron rods. The UNP has failed to reopen the closed paper factory, but they are opening alcohol distilleries. An investigation must be carried out into the attack on the journalists. The IGP and the media ministry must turn their attention to this matter and uphold the safety of journalists. Two of those who were arrested were released within an hour. 
six days after the attack, there are yet to arrest the other four suspects. We believe that there is major influence being exerted here. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Koralipatu Pradesh Sabha has taken steps to secure an injunction halting construction of the controversial distillery. A train has derailed in close proximity to the Colombo Fort Railway Station. The railway control room says that while no persons were injured in the incident, the railway tracks were damaged as a result of the derailment. The control room added that delays are being experienced between Colombo Fort and Maradana Railway Stations. Another project was initiated under Phase 2 of the Gamma the 100 Days Initiative in Hindogama Anuradhapura today. The project was initiated in the remote area of Diulwewa in Hidogama. The village has been in need of a community hall for a long time. Though the construction of a community hall was initiated some time ago, the work had come to a standstill. Financial aid for the project is being provided by PE+. Officials from News First and PE+, participated at the launch of the project today. <laughs> Moving on to sports news now, speaking to the media following yesterday's comprehensive 90-run defeat at the hands of the visiting Bangladeshis in the first of the three-match ODI series, Sri Lankan batsman Dinesh Chandimal expressed these views. The Bangladesh team has about seven or eight players who have played international cricket for about ten years. So there is immense experience in their team. It is the same team that has been playing for the past six or seven years. Chandimal also spoke on the reason for the defeat. Our fielding was not very good. In spite of all the training we have done in terms of fielding, we have many young and inexperienced players who make mistakes. We are hoping to address our shortcomings in field and move forward in the next match. On the impact of the toss, Chandimal had this to say. We cannot say that the toss impacted our loss. It was a decision we made as a team. Over the past two days, we saw there was a lot of dew on the ground in the evenings. We hoped to take advantage of that, so we discussed it and made a decision as a team. Well, who should be the most popular sports personality of the year? Sri Lankan swimmer Matthew Wabe Singer has been nominated for the most popular sports personality of the year at the Sports First Platinum Awards. The award ceremony will take place on the 31st of March at Stein Studios, Ratmalana. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Weekend Primetime News and we end tonight's bulletin with an excerpt from the speech delivered today by Northern Province Governor Regino Kure during a public rally in Gaul. Good night. SWRB Bandaranag Mahatya Vitarai Merate Horunta Dandu Ankali Sri Lanka Andu Ovat UMP Andu Ovat Merate Horunta Dandu Ankali Ne Torane Malap Iliata Tina Ratu Pata Nil Pata Kola Pata Bubulu Patna Hari Lassana Vena Vena Mapatu Abad Torane Pitipasa Yama Nil Pata Kola Pata Balbala wire record a mart to a lambo, Puduma on the day. Mama Kianoa, Hurum the Dandu Uncle to Muna Pakshevuna. Ever the pure regate. Hurum the Dandu Uncle and the Anagama, Meandu Hururakinata Tapurutai. Meandu Hurum the Dandu Uncle. Me gave a report of Grand and Nahudane. We will have in the game a report of Grand.